come back at me with this one too because I know you understand this and have a good way of thinking of this too. Sure. When you have a schism in the church in the 1500s with Martin Luther and the whole church, the whole section of the church breaks away, it had been taught before by, by many that there's no salvation outside the church. In other words, the church is the mother. And as the fathers of the church said, you can't call God your father if you don't have the church as your mother. These are not inseparable. The church is the mother. This is where you get baptized. The mother baptized. I don't baptize myself. The church baptizes me. The church confirms me. Mm. All these things. I'm in the church. These are the things necessary. Jesus instituted his church as the means of salvation, as the means of teaching, passing the faith on all of these things that's in the church. She's our mother. We must be a member of the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And we are supposed to be under the authority of the church because he said, if your brother sins against you, take it to the church. Well, mm -hmm. if you're, it's there. You have to be part of this big thing. Mm -hmm. yep. The city, the family, the mother, all of these images. Now you have all of a sudden a bunch of people break away and you could say during Martin Luther's time, you broke away from the church, you are, you are jeopardizing your salvation because mm -hmm, the church mm -hmm. is necessary. But now you come to our day, and you said that there are evangelicals out there who are very understanding of what we – and right. they recite the creed. Exactly. And they get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they're willing to shed their blood as martyrs for Jesus. Now, can I look at them and say they're not saved? I have to be very careful because Peter said when he first went to Cornelius, he said, now I know that God is no respecter of persons, that whoever is willing to pray and seek after God, he will accept them. And what happens about the boy in Africa? And I like to use this example. Here I am raised in Michigan in a Christian family, and I've been taught the Bible, and I've been taught about Jesus, and my mom knelt with me in front of the green vinyl couch when I was four years old and led me in the sinner's prayer to have Jesus be my Savior. Now, in Africa or somewhere else, there's a little boy who's an animist, and they worship the gods in the trees and in the clouds. And he and I both die at 13 years old, and we're both standing before God, and God looks at me and says, Steve Ray, you knew Jesus. You proclaimed Jesus. So you come into heaven. And you, little native boy, you did never use the word Jesus. You never prayed to me. So you go straight to hell. Mm -hmm. And the Catholic Church says, wait a minute. What kind of God would do that based on ignorance, maybe that this boy right. had? That's not his own fault. So we have to then say, there are these people who love Jesus. And Get let's you. face it, some evangelicals know the Bible better than we do. Some of them can sing better than we can. And are we going to say they're going to hell because they're not members of the card-carrying Roman Catholic Church? And so the, the Vatican II said, let's redefine this in a different way. There is no salvation outside the church. That is still true. It is true. Yeah. It is the work of Jesus Christ and the work of the church that brings salvation. And maybe somebody gets the benefit of that over there, but it's still the work of Christ. Mm-hmm. That, get, mm -hmm. that provides that salvation for him. Now, we want, and I use the example of a ship. We're all on the ship. Jesus sent out one ship. We're all on it. It has a pope, and it has a crew, and it has water, baptism. It has the food, the blessed Sacrament. The ship is going across the ocean of time to the celestial city, but halfway across. In the 1500s, a bunch of guys say, we're sick and tired of the pope telling us what to do, and we're tired of the same old food. And some of these people are beginning to, to stink, and I'm tired of this. I'm getting off. And they go down below the ship, and they find wood, and they find ropes, and they lash them together, and they make rafts. They throw their rafts over the side of the ship, and now they're on their own. Well, the early church said, well, if you're going to leave the church, you're on your own. There's no salvation. But then Vatican II said, but listen to them. They're singing over there. Mm. They're quoting scripture. They're claiming Jesus as, their, as as it's both God and man and the Trinity, and they're reciting the creed. Look at some are even dying for their faith. You know, these also are our brothers and sisters in the faith, and they're saved through the same Savior that started the ship across. Now those are our brothers and sisters, although they're separated from the ship. And our work of ecumenism is not to say, can't we just all get along? Our group, our work of ecumenism is to get everybody back on the bloody boat. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying then is there isn't actually a contradiction. It's still true no. that you're not saved uh, except through the church. But we have to understand what that means. We have to unpack it. And I suppose that this is part, 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 partly to the point that we, we don't call our Protestant friends heretics anymore. We call Martin Luther a heretic, Zwingli a heretic. Well, but, I call some of them that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, or, or maybe we don't say it officially. I mean, if, you, if you've been raised in a Protestant family and know, you know nothing else, um, it's, it's not like you made a conscious choice to break away from, from the church. Exactly. Is, that's the distinction. And, and I think, say, for example, 
somebody who has been a Catholic all their life. And this is the, the what I was answering this young man on my blog today. His parents were nominal Catholics and had him baptized, but they went, they left the church in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, whenever, and he became a theist. He believes God exists, and his mother's an atheist. Will they get to heaven? He says, my priest said they're okay as long as they're good people. Well, I said, your priest is partly right and mostly wrong, because they knew the truth, and they walked away and denied it. But then I have to say, how well did they know the truth? Mm -hmm. Were they really taught the Catholic faith, or were they taught a watered-down caricature of what it really was, and then later in time were honestly convinced it was wrong, and now they're trying to live a good life and be good to people and kind, and practicing a lot of what they learned as Catholics, but they reject the church because they were never taught what it really was, and they were then convinced intellectually or otherwise that it was not true, and they really, really believe that, I'm not the judge of their soul at that point. Right. God is. Right. If it's an invis invincible ignorance, I had this problem with my own parents, Matt, because when I became Catholic, they were Baptists. Yeah. I went to mom and dad and said, mom and dad, it's good to be Baptist, but it's only part of the truth. The whole fullness of the truth is in the Catholic Church. Who are you to tell us we changed your diapers, you little brat? Who are you to tell us we're wrong now? Well, I understand that. And they had been so taught as early Christians against the Catholic Church, there was no way that I could say anything as their little baby in diapers, that's how they still saw me, that could change their mind. They had been, it's so ingrained in them. So will my mom and dad go to heaven or will they be damned to hell because they never became card-carrying Catholics? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you where my dad is. My dad's in heaven. If he, I told him, Dad, you're going to be surprised when you have to take a little stint through purgatory. But just remember, I told you, you know, you'll get out of there. <laughs> But I have to, I, my dad, he loved Jesus more than anything in his life. There wasn't a day he went by he didn't tell people about Jesus and yeah. dying on the cross. Yeah. And if your dad knew that the Catholic Church was the one true church, which he had to had to join, he, he would have. He would have. Exactly. My dad was an honest man who followed, he taught me as a boy, follow the truth no matter Why? even if... Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.